I meet a lot of people who seem to love God. But a question I like to ask them is this. Do you know that if you died today, you'd go to heaven? It's distressing that so many people who seem to have a sincere relationship with God, well, they just don't seem to know how to answer that question. Many people say, well, I hope so, or I think so. They seem to be saying, I think I'm doing enough to go to heaven, but I'm just not certain. You wouldn't keep your money in a bank called Nearly Secure National Bank, would you? When you entrust your money to a bank, you want to know for certain that your money is 100% safe there, right? Now, I know eternal life may not seem that important to you right now, but that can change in an instant. When a baker makes a cake, he knows that the right preparation and execution is going to make a perfect cake every time. When a contractor sets out to build a house. He's not just hoping to end up with a house. He knows he will. His experience tells him that the right preparation and execution results in a very nice house every time. But what about eternal life? Is it misguided to expect that with the right preparation and execution that we may fully expect a guarantee of eternal life? Well, let me assure you that the early apostles clearly taught that you can absolutely know Listen to 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. The Apostle John wrote this, And this is the testimony, that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has life, and he who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Now we're told in those two verses that there are two kinds of people in this world. Those people with Jesus and those people without Jesus. So what about those who have Jesus. Well, they have eternal life. Okay, so what about those who don't have Jesus? Well, John writes that those without Jesus do not have eternal life. Now, verse 13 is the big verse. Here's what he says. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Did you catch that? You may know that you have eternal life. Now, how cool is that? You can know that you have eternal life. So here's the question. How does one achieve this absolute knowledge of salvation with Jesus Christ? What does one need to do to get that? Now, it may surprise you to know that eternal life is secured as a free gift of God. The Bible calls that grace. The Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Now that word grace, it's the Greek word charis, means gift. That's right, salvation's a gift. You don't work to get a gift, and you don't work to keep a gift. The reason so many people are uncertain of their salvation experience and their eternal salvation is that they just aren't sure, well, exactly what it is. They're not sure how they got it, and they're not even really sure how to hang on to it. Their eternal salvation is merely a vague concept swimming around in their heads. But the Apostle Paul and John in this passage said that you can know that you have eternal life. A gift is a gift. Well, let's say I give you a car. First thing you wonder is, are there any strings attached? Now, if I say, no, nah, there are no strings attached, well, then you got yourself a car. It's a gift. However, if I say, well, yeah, here's all you got to do. You can have this car, but you got to pick me up every morning at uh, 7 o'clock, and you got to drop me off at work, and then you got to come back to work at 5 and bring me back home that evening. Well, now I'll ask you a question. Is it really a gift? Well, no. I mean, there are strings attached, right? Yes, you do have a car to drive, but every morning at 7, you got a job to do. And again, every evening at 5, you got another job to do. Now, the Apostle Paul said it like this in Romans chapter 11, verse 6. And if by grace, now listen, grace means free gift, and if by grace, then it is no longer of works, otherwise grace is no longer grace. But if it is of works, it is no longer grace, otherwise work is no longer work. 
So you see, grace means gift. If you got to work to get it or even keep it, it's not really a gift, is it? Let me assure you that eternal life is a gift. It cannot be achieved by works. Now back to the car. If you fail to pick me up one day, do you lose the car? Well, maybe. What about if you're just late? Is it still your car? Well, again, maybe. Or maybe you're late picking me up a lot. And every once in a while you do forget altogether to come pick me up. Aren't you at that point kind of unsure about the status of your ownership of the car? Now, unfortunately, that's the way many people are with regard to their salvation. They just aren't sure about it. And the reason is they didn't fully understand the original agreement whereby they came to have the car in the first place. Now, let me be clear. Salvation is absolutely a contract between God and you. It's the supernatural act of God. When you understand the contract, you can be certain of your eternal salvation. That contract is to be found in the New Testament, but there's a lot more in the New Testament than just the salvation contract. So, how about uh, allowing me to go over the contract with you directly from Scripture? Here's what I want you to do. Just go to Bible Track on Facebook and follow the link to eternal life. I'll show you exactly what you must do to have eternal life. I'm Wayne Turner, and this is Bible Track.